Ah, so electronics time now. Um, now, obviously, I have the super cheap ramps and the super cheap Arduino Mega clone, and I also have a uh, LCD controller here that I'm not going to bother using right at the beginning just to eliminate some variables in case things don't quite work out. Um, before I go any further and start wiring this thing up, um, the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that the actual Arduino itself uh, functions because it was like three dollars or something I don't remember it was incredibly cheap the ramps is probably even more dubious but um, we'll get to that next the first thing to do is to get the Arduino up and running and I think the best way of doing that is to um, hook it up to the IDE uh, flash blinky to it and just make sure that it's actually working at all then what we'll do is we'll attach the ramps to it and um, make sure it's still able to be programmed because yeah maybe once the ramps on there it causes some problems who knows and then whilst I'm all hooked up to the computer with it I might as well get the initial uh, build of the firmware or the configuration of the firmware that I'm going to use sorted out so we're going to go through Marlin um, yeah so let's go to the computer right so here we are then in uh, Arduino IDE and if you don't have Arduino IDE uh, well you can go and get it <laughs> it's free I will uh, put all of the details and links to anything that I'm using here uh, on my website which will be linked in the description uh, so this is your basic Arduino IDE um, I'm not really going to describe how to install it it's very simple and uh, if not then there are plenty of videos on YouTube that describe that in great depth um, now the first thing I'm going to do I think is well the first thing I'm going to do is just to make sure and I have connected the um, Arduino Mega to the computer as you can see here um, it looks like it's probably got blinky on it already I'm not sure if you can see it but the green light is flashing uh, very much like a blinky um, piece of script or program but we're going to double check that first thing I need to do is as this is the first time I've connected it to this computer is we'll find out what COM port it's on uh, we're going to device manager look it down at COM ports and we've got COM4 which is the CH3340 it says here but I thought it was anyway doesn't matter that's it COM4 so we'll go into tools and we'll set to COM4 and we shall set the board type to a uh, mega and uh, the first thing we're going to do because it looks like it's probably got blinky on it already is we'll change it so that it's a um, actually no we'll just comment this out entirely so that it doesn't do anything first of all uh, yeah so that should do and uh, yeah then we'll upload and it's going to compile relatively quickly hopefully it's uploading and uh, yeah let's see if the uh, <laughs> the Arduino is now doing nothing which would be a good sign it is indeed doing nothing so that all seems to be working let's um, double check um, I'm pretty confident that that Arduino Mega is uh, well working and as far as <laughs> it's communicating it's probably a good sign so let's um, let's do a very fast blink and upload that and let's check if the little green light is blinking away at half sorry once every half a second which it is so it's good news it looks like the uh, clone Arduino Mega is well at least as far as basic functions all seems fine I'm not going to bother testing anymore um, so the next thing we'll do is getting into configuring a Marlin Ah, right, so that was uh, pretty tedious. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, I've just done a comparator with the original file, which is on the left here, and the updates I've done on the right here. Um, bear in mind, and after I've been through all this, basically there's a lot, majority of these settings in here really are sort of tuning things. They're not critical to even set or get right at the beginning. So I have kind of just done the ones that need to be about right, or in some cases set a few on a very sort of safe side of things. So 
as I'm not aware yet, uh, for example, which way the um, uh, limit switches are going to go and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, basically I'm just limiting the whole thing to do as little damage as possible if it doesn't actually turn out to be as I expected. So quickly go through them. So yeah, basically, you know, uh, some of this stuff you could just skip over completely. So I've just given it um, some ID about when I created this configuration. I've changed the name of the printer, which pops up on the LCD. Thermistors. There's a whole bunch of options that are in here. And if you know exactly which one you've got, then well, more power to you. I have no particular idea. And so I've set them to ones that they look like, um, or as close to possible as what I think they are, and set them in there. I don't think it's going to make a whole load of difference. They're all 100k uh, thermistors and probably 4.7k uh, pull-ups. So I've left at the moment all of the max uh, temperatures to default. Um, and as I've put in a note here, um, yeah, I'll come back and check all these things out really. Um, I do have an all metal hot end, so I'm hoping that 275 is doable. I haven't done anything with the PID settings. Uh, yeah, they're gonna need to be tuned anyway. So they're just, I'm just using the Ultimaker defaults. I have turned on um, PIDs for the bed temperature. Yeah, I put a note in here that's saying you can reduce the sort of throughput of current through the ramps board primarily, and most importantly through the MOSFETs on there, uh, by PWMing the power. However, um, I'm not worried about that because I'm not going to be running the bed very hot and maybe not even at all for these tests. Um, and before I do any serious sort of hot stuff on the bed, I'll be changing the MOSFET anyway. So um, yeah, just leaving it to the maximum. Yeah, so for the end stop pull-ups, uh, because I'm using these sort of all-in-one little uh, micro switches on printed circuit boards, they already have pull-ups built into them. So um, I've set the, uh, I've disabled them all at the moment, or rather just left them disabled because they were anyway. Um, I'm not too sure yet about the proximity sensor. What, um, I'm going to have to test that basically when we power things up to see if it pulls to ground, pulls high or floats. But anyway, going to have to test that. Uh, oh, right. Okay. So this is whether we need to invert the end stops, which again, can only check when it's powered up. I have set up the um, steps per millimeter for all axes, axes and the, and the um, extruder. So I have 1.8 degree steppers with 16 tooth um, pulleys and two mil pitch on those pulleys, which works out if you use the calculator, which I'll link to, uh, works out to 100 steps per millimeter for each of the X and Y axis, because obviously they're the same. The Z axis, I again have a 1.8 degree stepper and I have the eight mil lead screws, which work out to an eight millimeter um, travel per revolution because of the four starts on them. Um, they actually have something like a two mil pitch, but uh, because there's four starts, that works out to eight mil per revolution. And that works out to 400 steps per millimeter. The last one, this 150 is a real guess uh, on my behalf. Um, so what I've done is I have taken the circumference of the hobbed area and it's seven mil in diameter which is well, the circumference of that is 21 mil. So in theory, as you know, roughly, uh, if that turns around or once, the uh, filament should move 21 mil, which means that it moves 150 mil, or rather there's 150 steps per millimeter with that uh, 1.8 degree nom, 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 stepper. Again, they might all need changing. <laughs> so these are only to get it up and running to begin with. I've slowed down the um, feed rates, yeah, just a bit, safer that way. Jerk, I have, what have I done here? Oh yeah, okay, so I defined, uh, sort of commented out all the original ones, and I've reduced jerk on the X and Y axis for now, just to, again, keep things safe. 
uh, obviously I have defined that there is a uh, fixed mounted probe and I have roughly set the offset from the extruder to 21 along the x-axis i.e. yeah left to right is 21 mil away from the actual nozzle and uh, yeah about 10 mil is the default anyway and it is about 10 mil further back than the nozzle and the z offset is uh, zero currently uh, we'll probably need to tune that so uh, clearance between probe points so this is the amount that it lifts uh, the z axis up as it moves between probe points and again just to make sure if things go really wrong and it starts probing in the wrong places that it doesn't hit the bolts and nuts that hold the bed on. So I've increased that to 10 mil, so that should clear anything there. The stepper directions, by default, it's set to false, true, false. Um, and I've just set them all to false because I don't know yet. I'm going to have to test that out and uh, come back and, and set it correctly. The homing height is disabled by default uh, I have enabled it I think this is a fairly new thing actually in uh, the version of Marlin so I have uh, enabled it so the idea is basically that when um, it starts doing its homing thing it makes sure that it lifts again the z-axis up so that um, I just need to check this is going to avoid hitting any of the mounting hardware for the bed really um, because in one of my youtube videos digitizer 101 commented saying his hit uh, one of the fasteners that holds the bed on so i have uncommented that i've actually left it at four mil um if i've got problems then i'll lift it up even more so the travel limits uh after homing this is kind of robbed more or less from uh tom's one of tom's videos uh, where the actual nozzle because it's to the left of the probe is uh, when the probe goes to zero the nozzle is about 10 mil off the side of the printer so that we reduce that travel amount by uh, 10 mil so that it stays on the printer i have also down here uh, limited the uh, maximum print area to 190 190 150 so again, um, I just want to try and make sure I keep things inside the confines of the printer and the heat bed, and then I can increase these as uh, as needed. Both temps disabled during setup. Oh yeah, okay. So there's basically a safety thing here, which are uh, enabled by default, which prevents you from going past the uh, minimum maximum points you set up here uh, by jogging the axes through well whatever interface you use. Now I may want to do that so that I can sort of start testing things out about how close things are and I may want to go below zero for example uh, or what it thinks is zero. So I've disabled those for the time being. Um, I will enable them again once it's all set up so uh, yeah. So auto bed living well going for uh, bilinear so I have uh, enabled that which is probably the one you want if you're doing this kind of build with a um, inductive bed sensor. I have increased the number of uh, X points that it does to four, which as the Y point, the number of Y points is based exactly on this variable, then it will be a uh, four by four grid. So it will uh, basically scan 16 points of the um, heated bed to come up with the leveling mesh. I'm guessing that this next thing here, so basically this is um, the sort of padding, if you like, from the from home I think it is where you want these um, mesh leveling sensing points to be so I'm keeping mine sort of well off the sides of the bed for the time being so yeah basically just limiting how um, far on the bed that those points can be so that again it just doesn't go and crash um, I have enabled the EEPROM settings and uh, directly in a minute what I'll do is I'll wipe out the um, the Arduino EEPROM, I'll just set every uh, memory address in the EEPROM to zero so that there's no sort of clashes with anything that might have been on there as it came. Okay, so I've come down and I have uh, set up the LCD. So I've defined to use the full graphics display by removing the comments out here. And uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, just a quick note, if you haven't got the UHG lib library, um, already you're going to need to get it i will link to that in uh, my notes on my website as well um, i already have it 
I'm not quite sure why they don't use the U82 lib, uh, which is sort of replaces, I think, mostly uh, U8G lib. But anyway, they haven't. Uh, yeah, I have um, enabled the SD card support as the uh, sort of the whole LCD little kind of control thing set kit that I bought includes an SD card slot. Yeah, basically, I'm not going to be able to set any of this stuff coming down here until I've actually tried it all out. This is just for setting up different sort of uh, types of uh, rotary encoders and stuff that different boards come with. So I'm going to have to play with it and see how that works. But anyway, that's pretty trivial. This allows me to individually home one access directly from the LCD screen, which may prove useful. Who knows? Um, I have also kind of, again, guessed <laughs> which uh, actual um, LCD driver it is. I'm kind of pretty sure it's that one. Put it this way, it's got a uh, rep rep discount full graphic smart controller printed on the PCB. Whether it is or not, I don't know. We shall find out. And uh, yeah, that is the end of the config H file, the configuration H file. Those are all the settings I'm going to make initially to get the thing up and running. And um, so what I'll do now is quickly wipe out anything from the um, Arduino's EEPROM. So let's skip over there and, and do that now. We'll open up the old IDE and I've written a very small little sketch here. Obviously I've had to include the EEPROM library. Uh, so we set up the uh, pin 13, which is the inbuilt LED, hopefully, and basically cycle through all uh, bits <coughs> or bytes in the um, EEPROM and uh, write each one to zero. And we'll do that for all of them. And then once it's done, we will put uh, basically turn the LED on, say it's done. So I'll upload that now. Um, that'll clear out the EEPROM and then I will come back and upload the uh, Marlin. Right, so here we are back in the uh, Marlin sketch folder, project folder. I don't know, I'm not very um, au fait with <laughs> Arduino uh, nomenclature. I'm a bit more of a um, PEC person really, or have been uh, moving more over to Arduino, I suppose. It does save a lot of time. And anyway, digressing again. So yeah, this is the version with uh, all of my mods in it. Uh, so now we'll just um, compile and upload. It's going to take quite a little bit of time to compile as it's a big old thing and it's got to pull in probably lots of different libraries. So we'll skip this bit. Right, so it's uh, finished its compiling thing and is now uploading the uh, sketch to the board. As you can see, it says writing down here. So it looks like it all compiled all right. Uh, once it's finished writing any second now, it should verify and there it goes verifying the code. And uh, yeah, so far the uh, board, the Arduino Mega clone has not exploded, caught fire and the lights are flashing as you would expect during this point of the process. There it is, it's done and it seems, yeah, it seems very happy. So uh, we're done. And uh, now, uh, well, we can go back to what we were doing, which is just putting the electronics together. But at least we've got the um, all the firmware on the board already. So, yeah, had to be done.